Today we're going to make dorade and foie gras carpaccio. This is a very elegant dish, and it does require a few special techniques and a little bit of time. But it's actually quite simple. It's only made up of a few ingredients, and it's amazing. So we have some dorade filet, debone de skinned, foie gras, sudachi, and some wild borage. For the wild borage, I'll have a foraging video up very soon. So the first step is to take the plate that we plan on using, decide on what size you would like the carpaccio, and find a circle the same size and use it to trace. So we're gonna take some parchment paper, and we're gonna make two circles. So we're gonna take a Sharpie and make a nice circle. We need two circles, one for the dorade and one for the foie gras. You also wanna do this in a cooler environment. If possible, do this when the stove is not on or the oven. To prepare this whole dish, you wanna avoid any heat whatsoever. So we have our two circles ready. So we're gonna start with the dorade. So I've cut the filet into nice pieces. Take note, you want the skin side for each piece, the same side down. Otherwise, your carpaccio may look a bit strange. So now we're gonna take the pieces of fish and arrange them inside the circle. For this size carpaccio, we don't need to use all of the pieces. So for this size, about this much should be fine. So we just wanna arrange them neatly in the center of the circle. Also, something to take note of, if you're making a larger carpaccio with this method, it's a good idea to put a tiny bit of oil on one side of the paper so that uh, it comes off easier. But for this size, I don't think it's necessary. So for the other circle, we'll save that for later. It's for the foie gras. So what we want to achieve here is the same thickness, the same size, two different ingredients on top of one another. Presentation-wise, it looks amazing. So we're going to start with the fish. So get a second piece of parchment paper and place it over. And then we're going to take a rolling pin and gently start tapping the fish. Now you don't need a lot of force here. You don't want to break the fish apart. You just kind of want to ease it out, flatten it out. It's good to go in different directions. You can also roll to kind of flatten everything out. So that circle we've traced is what we're going to use today. And the rest we're going to trim off. So get some sharp scissors and we're just going to cut around the circle. Also keep in mind the excess, the leftovers, can be used for many other different types of uh, recipes. So once we remove all of the excess, we're going to put this on a plate and keep it in the fridge. So this goes without saying, but you want to use the freshest, best quality fish. Everything should be very clean. You should remove as much red or blood from the fillets as possible. You should treat this like sushi. So now we're going to start with the foie gras. So this is a raw piece of foie gras that has been frozen. But you can also use foie gras terrine, which has been cooked. So I'm just going to slice some nice scallops off and arrange them in the center of the circle, just like with the fish. Nice and neat. So again, you want to do this in a cool environment. The foie gras can be a bit tricky to work with uh, when the temperature rises. So if you're using raw foie gras for this, you want to make sure there's no veins. It should be very clean. And like I said, this has been previously frozen. But if you insist on using a cooked product, you can use foie gras terrines or pâtés, and they work just as well. So we're gonna prepare this the same as we did with the dorade. Second piece of parchment paper over, and we're going to roll this out. So again, you wanna do this in a cool environment. The surface should be cold. So we're gonna gently tap with our rolling pin, changing directions until we have the same thickness as our fish. So it should look something like this. Also, if your foie gras gets a bit too soft and it's difficult to work with, you can just put it back in the fridge for 10 minutes. So now we're going to cut our circle out, just like we did with the fish, and definitely save that excess foie gras because you can use it for a lot of other recipes. So here's our circle. We're just going to flatten it out. It's a bit softer now because we've been working with it outside the fridge. So we're going to save this for later. So using a spatula, we're just going to flatten it out. And then we're going to put it on a cold plate and then back into the fridge. So we're going to put this in the fridge for about 5 to 10 minutes so it stiffens up a bit. And in the meantime, we're going to work on our wild barrage flowers. So barrage flowers have these clusters of leaves right below the petals. And they are edible, but they can be a bit 
chewy, so I like to remove them. For me, they're very similar to the cluster of leaves on the top of a small tomato. So unfortunately, we have to do these one by one. They are delicate. We should have nothing but the flowers left. So about five minutes later, these have cooled down a bit, and we're going to put them together. So these have stiffened up a bit. I'm going to take another plate, not the one we're using to serve it on, just another clean surface. So we're going to start with the foie gras. And we're going to remove one side of the parchment. So we're going to season it, and then we're going to sandwich the two pieces together. So we're going to transfer the foie gras to another plate. We're not serving on this plate. So we're going to get a spatula to get a good grip on one side of the paper. And we're going to gently remove the parchment paper. So at this point, if it's too soft and it's sticking, you can put everything back in the fridge. Try again in another five minutes and it'll be much easier to work with. So we've removed the one side of the paper and now we're going to season. So we're going to use quite a bit of salt, but you need to remember that foie gras is mostly fat. And for most things, the fattier the ingredient, the more seasoning it requires. So I'm using high quality sea salt. Next, I'm going to use some white pepper. You can use other types of pepper if you want, black pepper, but I prefer white pepper because you don't have the, the speckles. And this is kind of a minimalist dish. We don't want too many things going on. So next we're going to put on the citrus. So today I'm using some sudachi. It's very aromatic. It's a little bit bitter. We're not going to put too much. Almost any other type of citrus would work for this. It could be lime, lemon, orange. If you have access to bergamot, so we want some nice fine grated zest. I'm using a microplane for this. And use another object to tap out the rest. So I should also mention that I'm using a cold plate to do this. This has been in the fridge. This is something even the most experienced cooks forget sometimes. When you're working with something like this, everything needs to be cold. All the surfaces, the air in the room, everything must be cold. Especially if you're going to prepare a lot of these. So now we're going to take our fish and remove one side of the parchment paper. And we're going to fuse it together with the foie gras. So because we put so much seasoning on the foie gras piece already, we can just stick this piece of fish right on. So you want to be careful with this part. You more or less only have one shot at this. You can move it around a little bit, but before you stick it all the way down, you want to make sure that it's lined up as nicely as possible. So before you fuse the two pieces together, you want to be very confident that everything is lined up as nice as possible. Also, you want to make sure the foie gras is still fairly cold at this point. If you see that it's starting to melt, you should put everything in the fridge, wait a few minutes, and then try this again. So now we have the two pieces together. I'm going to take a spatula and kind of round this out a little bit. Any of the edges that look a bit rough, so everything's nice and clean. So if we were in a restaurant, we could prepare a bunch of these before service, and then if someone ordered one, we could just pull this out of the fridge like this and serve it up within a few minutes. But of course, you'd need to make these fresh for every service. So now we're going to start plating. So we're going to flip this over to the foie gras side, and we're going to take the piece of parchment paper off the foie gras. So we want to be as gentle as possible. Again, if you find this tricky to work with, you can put it back in the fridge. It'll harden up a little bit. It'll be much easier to work with. So we're going to put some more seasoning on this side of the foie gras. If you're using cooked foie gras, I would put a little bit less seasoning because chances are your pate or terrine has quite a bit of seasoning in it already. So now we're going to switch with the plate that we're using. And we're going to lay this carpaccio foie gras side down and to keep everything clean we're going to go very slow we're trying to get this right in the center of the plate also remember this plate has been in the fridge as well everything has more or less been in the fridge or is relatively cold if you 
you try and use a room temperature plate for this, the foie gras could start melting and it would just be a mess. So now I'm going to take an offset spatula and just smooth everything out. Once everything is nice and flat, we're going to remove that last piece of parchment paper. So we're going to remove that last piece of paper. You can see how beautiful this is already. That fish is so thin, it's practically transparent. This is one of my favorite techniques to use. You can use it with almost any kind of ingredient you want. It could be fish or meat on its own, or you can mix them up like this. So I'm just gonna brush some nice quality olive oil, just a little bit, just for some nice shine. And we don't want the fish drying out either. So we're almost ready to serve. We're gonna put a couple more garnish on top. So we have these beautiful barrage flowers that I forged for. And it's an amazing coincidence, but they are the same color as the plate pretty much. And for me, that makes it look even better. So we're gonna arrange these nicely in a circle. And the barrage flowers are not just on the plate to make it look nice. They actually have quite a strong flavor. They're sort of in between cucumber and almost an oyster flavor. And that goes perfect with this dish. So we'll put the last couple of flowers in here. Also, please remember that if you don't have any of these ingredients, you can substitute anything you want, almost. Just take what's good, what's in season, apply the same technique to it, and it will be good every time. Also, one of the advantages to having a cold dish like this is you can prepare a lot of this in advance, and you can serve a lot of people at once whether it's a slightly larger than usual dinner party, restaurant, or large catering event. All the same benefits apply. So now we're gonna finish with a little bit of caviar. You can use salmon eggs or lumpfish roe, anything like that. And there we are, absolutely beautiful. Super luxurious and elegant, but very simple. Also more importantly, consider using some of the techniques I used today for another dish of your own. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching. Happy cooking.